making a model out of, um, well, out of Oreos, okay? I'm gonna give each one of these students uh, an Oreo, and your job is to make one of the faces of the moon. You guys up for it? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, who, who's gonna turn down getting a free cookie, right? <laughs> yeah. I just feel sorry for the person who gets a full moon. You know what I mean? I'm gonna give everybody an Oreo cookie, and you're gonna open it up and make it into one of the phases of the moon. So we'll see how you do. So the hard part is splitting these apart so you get a nice full moon and kind of leftover stuff. So each student will get one phase of the moon. Okay, you can see that they're really enjoying this, uh, <laughs> making the different phases of the moon. How are we doing here? <laughs> okay, unfortunately you broke yours. Yep. So we have to start over again on that one, all right? All right, good luck on this. Eight different phases of the moon. Let's see, we, looks like that crescent's been chewed on a bit. <laughs> and then we got our first quarter, our gibbous, our full, waning gibbous, last quarter, last crescent, or the, uh, and finally a new moon. Pretty good job. I think the part they liked best was when they got to eat the parts that are not shown. Let's take one more look at it. There we go. Let's line them up. Next. Next. Full and what's our next one? Okay, now we're starting to get smaller. Okay, so this one is now that we're getting smaller. This one is uh, like here, okay, next, and getting smaller like here. What else do we have? This guy right here, getting smaller, and finally, we have the new moon. So, different phases of the moon using Oreos. Not bad. Not bad at all. I guess this is a little bit uh, easier to handle your mistakes on this one. <laughs> okay. That's a lot. Here's a couple other, uh, this is one, uh, here's one that you could, this is a flip book I made just with a, uh, a post-it notes to show the different phases of the moon. And uh, there's actually, you can get online and find flip books that have the actual photograph, photographs of the, uh, the moon. So whether you do it with paper, post-it notes, or Oreos, learn the phases of the moon. Okay, so this is the uh, model of the moon. I mean, you can use a lot of different models. And this shows rotation, because it's spinning on its axis. And this is revolution, because it's going around something. These two things that help us learn about the phases of the moon. So you have your worksheet here. We talked in the previous lesson about the different phases. And you were able to make the different phases and draw them down here, a full moon, a waning gibbous, and then we have the last quarter, because it's getting darker and darker, last quarter, and as it continues to go through its period of time, finally, uh, smaller and smaller, and so we have, we end up with a crescent, but it's a waning crescent because this whole side is waning crescent. All right? And then as it continues to change, we eventually get to a place where the moon is completely void of reflected light. Because remember, the moon is a reflected light from the sun, and so we get what we call a new moon. And as this continues, now we're going to start to wax. Right, so this is a waxing crescent. And as it continues to get larger and larger, as it's waxing, which means getting larger, we have our first quarter. And we're still waxing. And so our waxing now, it's going to be almost completely full. And this is a gibbous because it's almost full. So we have a waxing gibbous. 
and we're back to our full moon, it's rotations. So when we talk about rotating, it always reminds me that if there's something around that's rotating, it rotates, it spins, and you might want to draw this picture, it spins on an axis. This is an axle or axis, okay? So I'd like you to write a definition of it, write a definition of it, and make a drawing of something else that you know that spins. And in here, revolution is, for example, if we have the sun here, Sol, and we have planets that go around the sun in an orbit. So revolution is, is for me, it's to go around and the word I like to understand is orbit. That's the path that something goes around another object. So it's going around an object, going around an object is called to revolve. So I'd like you to write a sentence of what is revolution, what is rotation, and draw a picture of each one. When I think of rotation, it's, it's when an object spins on its axis, and I think of, uh, and, I, and what I think of is day and night. Okay? So revolution is when an object goes around another object. And what I think of is a year or months, year. So it comes completely around. Okay, so we have rotation, which is day, night, day, night, day, night, one day, one day, one day. We have revolution, which is happy birthday, one year, two years, three years. Now, here's the hard part. Can you rotate and revolve around the room without getting dizzy and falling down? So either uh, try that for a moment, try some rotation and some revolution. Here are two drawings that you should have probably added. For example, I'm not very good at this, but maybe I got a student that can come down and show us how to show how a ball can rotate on, on your fingers like a basketball. That's rotation. Or if you got a person that can and I'm not that good at this either, but they can take a basketball and put it around their waist, around their waist, uh, and that is like around the world, and that is called to revolve. Now, we live here in Indianapolis, uh, and there's a race every summer, and there's a track, and the cars revolve around the infield. And that's another example of revolving when the cars go around or a basketball around your waist. So we had a student that could show us that. Right, Ryan, so you have a, a, an object right there, right? And can you show me, can you uh, show me revolving around your, move it around your body? This is revolving, okay? Re that ball's revolving around. Now show me rotation on your finger, if you can show rotation. Wow, look at that. So it's rotating, his axis is his finger. I have here a model, model of the moon, and it's got this uh, part, uh, part right here, which is kind of interesting. If I push this in, now I have a light. This is the dark side, no light goes through. And this is a, a lighted side. And if I hook these two together, okay. And so with this model, I should be able to show you some phases of the moon. And so what you see here, besides my glasses, kind of creepy, what you see here is a full moon. And as the moon starts to rotate, you can see that the reflected light changes, and now you have a new moon, and a crescent, and a quarter, and a gibbous, 
and back to full. So here it's full and it's getting smaller. There's the last quarter. There's the waning gibbous. I like this one because uh, it's easy to show. You have um, the model you made with your uh, moon phase model, flip books, the Oreos, a lot of different ways to learn about the moon. So let's take a, um, a few moments. We're going to switch from the moon to the stars. When you look up at the sky, some things look small and some things look large. And often the moon looks like it's so large. And, and the sun, although it's bright, doesn't seem to look as big as the moon. And I wondered about that. But there's, there are two things that I really can't understand very well. And maybe you can. I don't know. There's two things about studying space and moon and stars that are just hard to comprehend. And maybe I make a drawing of it. The two things are distance and size. It's really, really hard to show distance and size. In fact, almost every picture you've ever seen of the solar system is probably not correct because if you made the planets the right size to the sun, it, they would be so large they wouldn't fit on a piece of paper. And if you shrunk them down, it's like uh, two, two things that are hard to understand is size and distance. Size and distance. Those are just two things that are difficult, if not almost impossible, for me to understand. So when I say size and distance, what, I, what I'm talking about is, okay, if, if, this, if, the, if I made this drawing right here of the sun, if that's the sun, which name is Sol, which is a star, okay? If that is the sun, the size of the sun, and I've drawn on this picture, the earth would be that big compared to it. Now, but it wouldn't be that close. If the earth was that big, I'd have to draw the earth way, 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 way over here, completely off the paper. I mean, it would be way over here at that size. Now, if I made the sun six foot tall, the, the earth would be maybe the size of a, of, a, of a ping pong ball, and it would have to be at the end of the hallway. So it's hard to make a picture of the Mercury and uh, Venus and Earth, my very eager, uh, uh, Mars and, and uh, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, you know, some of these a little bit bigger, but you can't make a, you would never see these at this size. At this size, you'd see the sun like that. If the sun was like that, maybe you could fit these on here, but they'd all be like the inner planets would be right here and the outer planets out here. You wouldn't even be able to see them unless you had a telescope. So size is real hard to figure out. Distance is even harder. I'm going to show you a video in a, in a moment about going to the moon. Now, we went to the moon. In, early, in the early 60s, real early 60s, uh, there was the uh, Russians had sent up a satellite that went around the world. It orbited, revolved around the Earth. It was called Sputnik. And we could hear that uh, here in the United States. Beep, beep, beep. And it got us very excited about the space and going to outer space and the moon. President John F. Kennedy announced that he wanted NASA to land a man on the moon, an American astronaut, before the end of the decade. And that was in early 1960. And so the first country to send a person in space was Russia. The first country to send someone to orbit in space was Russia. The first country to have someone do a spacewalk, I believe, was Russia. But the first people to land on the moon were two Americans, and uh, Neil Armstrong was the first, and he actually, uh, on July 20th, 1969, landed on the moon and did the first moonwalk. Since then, we had 12 Apollo astronauts on six different missions land on the moon. But why the moon? If we make another drawing here on distance, if this is the Earth, now this is completely different from that drawing. So we have our Earth here, and it's rotating. And we can put a moon this far away. Now that distance is about 237,000 miles, OK? Which seems like a lot. But now remember, this is not the scale. 
but the distance to the sun from the earth is about 92 million miles. So here we got hundred thousands, here we got 92 million. So the Apollo space program took three days to get to the moon, going as fast as it could. The, large, the fastest spaceship we have made in the 70s was something called the Helios Probe, and it went to the sun, and it was going 150, I think it was going, I, I, I think it was going 157,000 miles per hour. That's the fastest we've ever had anything go. And it went to the sun and, and did some um, recording before it was destroyed. Okay, so the question is, could we go to a star? Well, the closest star, Alpha Proxima, is, is so far away that it would take, going at 117,000 miles per hour, this star is so far away that it would take something like 17,000 years to get there if you were going at this speed. So stars are really far away, really far away. And so when you think about distances, it's almost impossible to think about distances without uh, um, thinking about it just too big and too far away. So there's a phrase, we could either go back to the moon or we could go to Mars or nothing. See, Mars is close enough that we could get to it. It would take three years with our best spaceship just to get to Mars and of course three years to get back. Let me show you a video, a couple of videos uh, here on, uh, on the moon that I think you're going to like. Moon for Kids Part 3, I talk about the Apollo program. Beings visited the moon six times. This was an American program called the Apollo program. I do want to show you one thing here. It, just a review. So if we have the sun, which is also called soul and the star and the earth. Remember this drawing is not the scale. So here's the earth and, and the moon going around it. The Helios probe in 1976 going 157,000 uh, miles per hour. It would take 117 years to get to the nearest star. So that's why you hear Mars or nothing. We can go to Mars, we can go to the moon. We'll just never be able to go to a star um, as much as I'd like to, we're going to have to use telescopes to do that. But as I said, you know, we look in the sky, some things look big, like the moon looks big and the stars look small, but actually stars are much, much bigger uh, than, than the earth uh, and or the moon. But if we have two things in the sky that look like this, so here is, here's two objects and you can tell this is much, much bigger than this one when they're next to each other. But if I do this, if this one's closer to me, now they're starting to be almost the same size. You see that? Look at that. Now, the marble is the same size as the tennis ball. And if I move this tennis ball that closer and this farther away, you can see that this is, uh, now the marble is even bigger than the tennis ball. And if I got this so far away, it would just be a speck of light. You would think that this is smaller than this. But as they come back together, you can tell that the actual size is much different. So it all has to do with your perspective of how far things are away from each other to tell about the size.